Crazy Apple Notebook Sales, iMac and iPad Pro versus their predecessors and how iOS 14.6 leaks are lining up for a new feature. This video is supported by NordPass, letting you store all of your passwords in one place. Organize your logins and private notes in a secure password vault and access it all with a single master password. And with NordPass's data breach scanner, you can find out if your online account or credit card information has been leaked. Right now, NordPass has their spring forward sale too until June the 1st, 2021. So my audience can get 70% off NordPass at nordpass.com forward slash iCave or use the code iCave plus, you'll get an additional month of NordPass for free. Thank you to NordPass for sponsoring this video. I'm iCave Dave and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. And if you want the latest Apple leaks, news and rumors every weekday at 12 UTC, like the video, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to ring the notification bell. Notification squad members are coming up soon. And so to start off today, let's just acknowledge that just on MacBook Air and MacBook Pro sales, uh, they've grown 94% year on year in Q1, which is pretty crazy. And remember, all of this is without the 16-inch MacBook Pro having an update since 2019. So a huge amount of that growth has come from Apple Silicon in Air and MacBook Pro models. Before we move on, Notification Squad new members are Aidan Marshall, John Richardson, Alan B Unboxings and News. Evan Rogers, Boicano Tusunke, and Rishab Aragwal. And of course, if you want a shout out in the next notification squad, all you need to do, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, let me know using the hashtag down in the comments. Now we've also seen benchmarks appearing for the new iMac with M1 and iPad Pro with M1. And there's no really big surprises. The M1 iPad Pro is 50% faster than its predecessor in the 2020 and basically the 2018 iPad Pro with A12X and AZ. And the 24 inch iMac is 56% faster than the top spec 21 and a half inch Intel model that you could get before. Now the fastest 27 inch iMac with the 10th gen Intel still outperforms the M1 by about 24%, but M1X should be just around the corner now for those more powerful models. And based on the numbers that we're expecting, that should make it about 50% quicker than that. And next up, we've talked about how Apple is planning their high fidelity version of Apple Music, which is very likely to arrive in the next few weeks and possibly even before WWDC. And there's a very good reason for that, which we'll come to in a moment. But there may be more to this than we previously assumed. In addition to the higher quality that the tracks using Apple's ALAC format or Apple's lossless audio codec will be using, it looks like they may include a version of Apple's spatial audio, but this would obviously have to change a little bit if it was purely for music because you don't want your audio centered around the, po uh, the phone because you don't want your audio centered around the phone that's probably in your pocket. Now, imagine what spatial audio could do once you get it combined with initially the LiDAR scanner in your iPhone 12 Pro or further down the line, Apple Glass, where you could scan the rooms in your home as part of the home app and place virtual speakers to build a soundstage, placing your audio in different positions in the rooms so you get directional audio as you walk through the house, just wearing your AirPods. And it looks like spatial audio will also be coming to the new base level iPods too whenever they arrive. And in terms of release dates, it seems most likely that because the feature was leaked in iOS 14.6, that it is most likely just around the corner because that version is also the version that will add support to the iPad Pro with M1. So it could come out as soon as next week. Plus Apple has made a point of showing how the iMac speaker array is designed for computational audio within your home environment, just as the HomePod did adding more fuel to the fire. And even more, it seems that Apple's Hi-Fi will just be baked into the normal version, not a premium extra money tier like most of the other platforms like Spotify are doing. More likely, this is going to be a way for Apple to sell more of their own hardware with the AirPods Pro and AirPods Max being able to take advantage of the higher quality. And the new AirPods also get in that spatial audio aspect too. And remember, no one else's headphones are going to support the spatial audio, at least initially. And also just imagine how immersive that's going to be when we get Apple Glass or VR experiences coming with Apple's headsets. It's just going to be absolutely insane. Right, we're going to get into some iCave answers, but today we've got so many that I'm going to go through them fairly rapid fire compared to normal, so uh, probably not as in-depth in most of these, but we'll get through them all for you. Marcin Kovalchik, do you think we may hear some more information about M1X IMAX before WWDC, or are we in for a more stealth release? Okay, so this just comes down to what has been going on in general with uh, with Macs. They are far more locked down in terms of production and in terms of leaks 
than anything else that Apple does. Now, we have randomly seen those specs for the colored uh, MacBook Airs slash MacBooks, depending on what they end up being. We have seen the stolen um, specifications for the MacBook Pros. But in general, when the iMac came out, we knew that there was probably going to be colors to it. We didn't know exactly what it was going to look like. We didn't know the exact designs. We didn't know how thin it was going to be. Like, we'd heard it looks a bit like an iPad on a stick, and I think that is pretty accurate for what we have, but with the chin on the bottom. Uh, but other than that, nobody was expecting white bezels, nobody was expecting the two-tone colours. There's a huge amount of stuff that happens that we don't kind of see ahead of time. So, I'm not sure. There may well be some uh, M1X benchmarks that leak before we get the M1X Max in our hands, but I don't think we will see benchmarks before WWDC. Salvik Mukherjee, will we get a major redesign of the 13-inch MVP in the next two years? What about getting more than two ports if so? Will it get a price increase, make 7K? No, I don't think that the 13-inch MacBook Pro is going to hang around, basically. I think that that is going to be one of these designs that is kind of is as it is now and will just disappear when it disappears. Now, they might keep it around as a lower-priced option, but keeping the M1 inside, I don't expect it to get any updates at all, including processors, over the next few years. So, don't think we're going to get that. I think all of the new stuff is going to go into the 14-inch and the 16-inch designs that we have on the way. The 13-inch is kind of their legacy design at this point, I think. Salvik Mukherjee, according to many renowned YouTubers, we may not be getting yearly updates of M1, I, M2, M3, ETC every year I'd actually like that approach. What's your thought? Are we coming close to a kind of saturation point? Make 7K. Yeah, those those YouTubers are wrong, I think. Um, I know I know that it's it's some big guys and I'm kind of out here on my own as the as the new guy who's um, thinks, no, it's going to be every year for the M1, M2, M3, 100%. The one that's less clear is whether the X series will get the annual updates, but I think it will because Apple really wants to push into this market. They've got a huge advantage at the moment and it would make no sense for them to not push on it. So I think we will get RM2 this October, November time. Only reason I mention October is I think that everything was pushed back by about a month this year uh, and I think we will still probably get the three events. I think we're getting the September, October and November events and we've actually kind of been shown some uh, dates for those. I will grab those now. So the dates that I've been told for these, and this is from the same guy that's told me about the June 21st date for Apple Glass, is September 14th, October 12th, and November 9th. So those are the dates that we have uh, kind of in our heads for it. Things do change. We will see what happens with those, but those are the plans at the moment as far as we know. I'm not sure what you mean by saturation point though. That's the one bit that doesn't kind of make any sense to me. Like, Apple just needs to push, push, push on these chips and uh, and just smash them out there. Salvik Mukherjee, which is a better by the 11-inch M1 iPad Pro or the 12.9-inch M1 iPad Pro, make 7K. Completely depends what you need. If you are buying for the display, which I think is probably the biggest kind of upgrade feature, the 12.9-inch the makes all the sense in the world. However, if you are just looking for the power and you want it to be able to throw in your bag easier. The iPad Pro 11 inch is a massive deal, I think, because number one, it's basically only 50 bucks more than getting a Mac mini with the same chip inside, but you're also getting a beautiful touch screen and you're able to do everything with that straight away. Whereas with your Mac mini, you are gonna have to shell out to get yourself a display, a keyboard, a mouse, at the very bare minimum. And most people will want more accessories than that. So. I think the uh, the M1 iPad Pro 11 inch is probably the best deal. Bruce Scrub, do you think Apple will have an CM1 card for the 2019 Mac Pro allowing the machines to act as a bridge for those who want the power of the M1, but can't get a new machine or trade up? I was thinking of the old Apple II cards the LC models had. Yeah, this is something that I was talking about right from the beginning, so like a, a card that plugs into it just like the Afterburner card, um, which I don't know, I really, I just don't know. There is a possibility that they would make a card that you could plug into it that has your M1 or an M1X built into the card, and then it could potentially access the rest of the RAM in the system as kind of a, an extra level up from the internal RAM that's the, the unified memory that's built into the chip itself, and maybe it could offload stuff to the graphics cards when it needs to render stuff that's massive. But for the snappiness and stuff, it, I mean, you might as well build a system where you kind of have a Mac Mini that can just access 
the Mac Pro as kind of a backup thing. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it can kind of use it over the network as a render farm. So that might be a way that they do some stuff. Don't know yet. I don't think the two systems are integrated enough though that you could kind of have the Intel and the uh, M series processors working together in general. Peter Holdman, do you think the redesigned Air will have the mini LED display? I was leaning towards them keeping that as a distinguishing feature for the MacBook Pro, at least initially. Now, this is a, a tricky question because it depends. We talked about the MacBook that's not the Air or the Pro the other day that is kind of still theoretical, let's say. And I think that is going to be one of the biggest factors in whether the MacBook Air gets it or not. So if the MacBook Air stays as the budget option, it stays at that 999 level, even with a slight redesign, um, then I think it won't get it. I think if the MacBook comes out as the base level and the MacBook Air becomes like your mid-tier, I think it will get it. And I think the mid-tier is more likely to get it purely because... Um, that mini LED display, if you're going to redesign your whole chassis anyway, you might as well design it in. Um, and then the MacBook Pro would be the one that has the M1X processor. The MacBook Air gets the nice display, but with the lower power processor, like the M2. And then the MacBook Basic gets the M2 with the basic display and the basic I.O. That's my thoughts at the moment, but it depends whether that MacBook that we've kind of theorized about actually is a thing or if it's not. Dwayne Alfred. Seven hours ago, do you think Apple will sell the new keyboard with Touch ID? What is sold with the Mad Range iMac? And do you think it will work with the new M1 Mac Mini? Yes, I think 100% they are going to sell them. Uh, I just don't know when they're going to start selling them. I think at the moment, we've had confirmation that it definitely will work with the M1 Mac Mini or any other of the M1 Macs. It won't work with Intel in terms of the Touch ID, as far as we know. But things can change, you know, firmware updates can happen. But that's as far as we know at the moment. We don't know when the date will be, and I think they are just making sure that they've got enough supplies to get the iMac out the door, and potentially the next iMac as well. Maybe it'll come in some other colours. Maybe we'll get black keys in the uh, in the larger iMac version, or maybe we'll get it with backlight for the uh, for the iMac Pro. That would be interesting, and that would also be a nice differentiator for the more expensive version. And maybe that's why they're not putting them out because they know they'll get a lot returned if they all of a sudden come out with a backlit version. Um, so who knows? We will see. Because there is a version with a number pad as well that's I think still got Touch ID, which is pretty cool. Evan Rogers, two hours ago, can you see an Apple v Epic settlement? These things rarely go to a ruling resulting in some sort of third-party game store, not App Store's integration into the future Apple ecosystem, e.g. Epic and Steam in an Apple console. So I don't see Apple working closely with Epic on this. It looks like at the moment, if there's going to be a settlement, it's going to be that apps are allowed to mention that you can buy their in-game currency elsewhere, which might be at a different price, or maybe they have to do it at the same price, but there's no commission going to Apple. I don't know. But I think that's more likely to be the kind of settlement that they end up with rather than allowing other app stores because I think that is too much of a step in terms of breaking the way that the, the app store works. Uh, obviously, for smaller developers now, it's a 15% commission, anything under a million dollars, which is, uh, you know, that's a reasonable amount to be making before you need to pay the, the higher tariff, I think, because that's kind of how tax works, right? William Philip Wright to repair will adversely affect trade-in and second-hand values as questions abound around the quality of the service and parts. Admiring your glorious wallpaper on your Mac mini desktop. Mate, did you take that photo? Second point first, no, I definitely didn't take that. I think it was from Unsplash. I will see if I can find a link to the image, but obviously I've kind of broken it up into two images already uh, so that it can run across the two displays. Uh, I don't want to post the two separately because that's kind of not what the artist did in the first place. But if I can find the link, I will post that down in the show notes. Um, on the first part, with the right to repair, reducing the resale value, I actually don't think it will. I think it's going to be better for resale, if I'm completely honest. And the main reason for that is, other than like MacBooks where the display is broken or something along those lines, you're going to know, basically, that if you buy a used Mac Mini or a used MacBook, that someone hasn't had it apart, tinkering with bits, putting in lower quality stuff. Because, like, you know, you might find a MacBook online, uh, like a 2018 or, you know, one of the earlier MacBooks, probably not 2018, because I doubt there's much in there you can change. But if you find an older MacBook, they might have put very low quality RAM in there that they bought off Alibaba or 
a wish or something um, that kind of tells you that it's a certain size and isn't. Same with hard drives. If they've been replaced um, with low quality parts, you know what I mean? So I think because of the kind of appliance nature of these, like everyone will know what they're buying. So that's my kind of thought on that side of things. But also in terms of the quality of parts, you know that you've got quality parts if it's only one part. And if it's and if it's an M series chip on an Apple logic board, you know that that's an Apple chip on an Apple board. It's not had some sort of dodgy replacements done. So I, I think actually resale will do pretty well because there's also basically like in a MacBook Air, there's no moving parts. There's nothing to be clogged up with dust. There's no fans that can get stuck and there's nothing to overheat. So um, yeah, I think that it's actually gonna be a good thing for resale rather than a bad thing. But anyway, everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. That's it for today. I've got to go and uh, I will see you on Monday.